Hi guys. It's your faculty, Ranganathan S.P. and Kondila. Coming back again with another uh, video of uh, current affairs, particularly targeting Indian history. In this uh, series of videos, I've been covering the current affairs of the last uh, 10 months, which are important for your prelims, which is going to start very shortly. Very, which, the, the exam is just going to happen very shortly now. Um, I cover different dimensions, different historical perspectives, um, Indian history, art and culture, everything is covered in these series of videos. Now, I teach on Unacademy. You can follow me on Unacademy. Um, just follow my user ID at the rate Shrivanar and you can find me live on Unacademy. Plus, subscribe to Unacademy Plus. Right there you will you can always follow me on Unacademy. Follow this YouTube channel and also do see my special classes for MCQs. Now, let us discuss today's uh, first uh, topic that is the Treaty of Ali Nagar or commonly called the Ali Nagar Peace Treaty, which was signed in 1756. See, the year 1756 becomes extremely important in Indian history because this was the year when uh, the black hole tragedy or the black hole event actually happened. <coughs> East India Company, who obviously had a settlement in uh, Bengal, um, attempted to establish themselves very strongly and even went through fortifications in Bengal, particularly the Calcutta settlement back in 1756. Now, the problem was when East India Company was trying to do this fortification of Fort Williams, they did not care to take permissions from the British before doing for uh, from the Nawab of Bengal. Sorry, from the Nawab of Bengal before doing the fortifications. Now, given that they did not take the responsibility to take permissions, the Nawab did not like this even quite good, and so Nawab of Bengal, Nawab, at that time Nawab was Nawab Sirajuddaula, sent um, Manikshan. Mir Miran and Madan Lal to conquer and to restrict these guys. And so did they go. Manik Chand attacked Calcutta. Manik Chand and Calcutta, they had a war. Calcutta was defeated. Calcutta surrendered. Unfortunately, approximately somewhere about 140 people, 40 British officers were arrested. They were put in a small room, confined to a small room. And... Um, when left there for the night, the next day morning, uh, about 123, 24 people died. Now, this event is commonly picturized as the Black Hole Tragedy or the Black Hole event where 120 plus British officers were suffocated to death. See, Killing British officers was never the intention of Siraj ud -Dawla. It just happened. It was never the purpose. It was never the intention. It just ended up that way. So, in order to resolve this issue, Nawab Sahib, the Nawab of Bengal, Siraj ud -Dawla, came to Calcutta, did a peace treaty or a peace agreement with the British. That peace agreement, which attempted to establish a momentary peace, was known as the Ali Nagar peace treaty. The Treaty of Alinagar basically strengthened the position of uh, British in Bengal. It also in a way laid the foundations of uh, Plassey. Now why it is called Alinagar is after conquering Calcutta, Manikchan and uh, the Nawab of Bengal renamed Calcutta with the name Alinagar. That's why since the treaty was signed in Calcutta, it is called the Treaty of Alinagar. Alinagar is the uh, Nawab's name of Calcutta. The treaty was uh, prelude to the British seizure of Bengal, British conquest of Bengal or British occupation of Bengal. Okay. Now, it was signed on the 9th of February 1757 British, between the British East India Company, represented by Robert Clive and the Nawab Sahib, Nawab of Bengal, Nawab Siraj Daula. Alinagar Treaty was, Alinagar remained a very short-lived name of Calcutta by Nawab after it was captured and uh, according to this treaty Nawab I mean before this treaty the Nawab had taken complete control of Calcutta. Calcutta was a British settlement established by Job Charnock 
after he purchased the territories of Kalikata, Sutanuti, and Gobindpur. Many English military mind and the threat of posed by Afghans, and that's the reason why that's why Siraj signed a treaty because he knew that after Black Hole tragedy he might have to face the British. Also, he was facing a lot of threat from Afghans, so he did not want to fight battles with two people. Now, as for the terms of the treaty, as for the terms of the Treaty of Alinega, the Nawab would recognize all the provisions the Mughal Emperor Farooq Siyar had given in his Golden Farman. Farooq Siyar previously had given Golden Farman, under which British were given tax-free permits to do trade in Bengal. Siraj would agree with that. So basically, British were given exemption from paying duties or taxes on goods passing through Bengal. British were also permitted to fortify Calcutta, mint coins in Calcutta, do everything that they wanted to do, you know, further expand the fort. So basically the main important terms were British were allowed to mint coins, British were allowed to keep their army in Calcutta, Britishers need not have to pay any taxes. See, the tax free permit for the Britishers were now applicable even to their private trade, not just to the company trade. So there were two types of trades which the British were doing in Calcutta. One was the company trade, which the company purchases goods, buys them, ships them to London and does the trade in the ships. This is the official. Then there is also this private trade. So company merchants themselves buy goods, obviously in a smaller quantity per individually and use company logistics to send the goods to London. So these guys used to trade in the minor goods, not the major, major goods East India company used to trade, but minor goods, these guys used to trade. So the original Farooq Siyar's Farman was only tax-free permit to the company goods. Now with the Alinagar Treaty, they were getting tax-free permit even for the individual trade and the private goods. Even for the individual trade and the private goods. Also, Fort Williams was to become company property. The signing of treaty was one of the events that eventually led to the famous Battle of Classy because the uh, the signing of treaty actually gave that support and sovereignty which the company needed to be prepared for the battle. See, Robert Clive had the intention to fight Siraj ad and removing him. That was of no consequence. He knew he wanted to get rid of Siraj ad but before he could get rid of Siraj ad Clive wanted to ensure that he is actually in a state where he could get rid of Siraj ad and he successfully did. The Alinagar Treaty literally made Nawab sign peace with English, but at the same time, the Nawab had to restore English to all their former privileges. In fact, during part of Nawab, uh, during part of this treaty only, the Nawab eventually was surrounded by a web of intrigue or web of conspirators who were pro Robert Clive. Mir Jafar became Mir Bakshin, the commander in chief of Nawab's army. Namanikchan, <coughs> the actual guy who defeated English in Calcutta, he became the officer in charge of Calcutta. Amir Chan was a rich merchant who was actually a pro British but made part of the uh, Nawab's cabinet. Jagat said, the uh, the man who cheated Siraj Uddala eventually and Khadim Khan who commanded the largest name, largest army of Nawab's troops. So Nawab Siraj Uddala, thanks to Treaty of Alinagar, was now surrounded by anti-Nawab institutions or pro-British individuals. <laughs> so in our modern Indian history, Treaty of Alinagar becomes a very important treaty, although not many give too much of importance to it. It remains an important treaty because if the Treaty of Alinagar had not happened, British would not would have never got that confidence to actually attack Brit Nawab Sahib and defeat him. Recently, in our current affairs, a group of temples, North Indian Nagara style of temples were in news. The Khajuraho temples or the Khajuraho temples are basically a magnificent examples of the Nagara style of temple, which is the North Indian style of temple. These temples, the temples of Khajuraho are magnificent examples of the Nagara style of temple. This was in news. Uh, it was built by Chandela rulers. Most famous of this group of Khajuraho temples is Khandarya Mahadev temple. 
Kandarya Mahadev temple. Very popular temple. See, in general, most of these uh, Khajuraho temples or Khajuraho style of Nagara temples always have a sanctum sanctorum. Sanctum is the Garbhagriha where the main deity or the priest, main deity is kept. Then towards between the pillared hall called Mandapa and the Garbhagriha, you have a small narrow channel that is called Antarala. Antarala is the place, if, today if you observe, that is the place where the head priest actually sits. A transept or commonly called Mahamandapa. You know, in the background you can see this is Mahamandapa. This is Mahamandapa. Additional halls, these are Ardha Mandapas, extra Mandapas, extra pillared halls which exist. And ambutri or a Pradakshinapada, which is around the temple, which is lighted with large windows. I mean, Pradakshinapada. This is a classic style of Nagara, also classic style of Khajuraho. Khajuraho temples are a collection of Hindu and Jain temples mainly seen in Madhya Pradesh. They are known for their ornate carvings, ornate temples. I mean, these temples were magnificent in terms of the contribution they have done to sculptural schools. The entire book of Kama Sutra is actually carved on these temples. Chandela Rudas built these temples between 900 CE to 1130 CE. They are located on the Vindhya mountain ranges. As of today, Khajuraho temple, particularly Khandere Mahadev temple, have UNESCO World Heritage Site. They have this status from 1986. Erotic carvings, sexual content, erotic carvings are very common in Khajuraho temples. As I said, particularly the book in the Kama Sutra is completely carved on this. Sculptures of celestial nymphs or celestial beings with broad hips, heavy breasts, even large languishing eyes are commonly found in Khandiriya Mahadev temple and the Vishwanath temple of Khajuraho. These sculptures are believed to reflect the idea of female beauty and fertility. I mean, as part of Kama Sutra series of books, they project these. Some of the other scenes which depict on the walls of the temples are, you know, the Nardara, the human life cycle, I mean, birth, survival, sannyasi, death, all that, you know, the Chatur karma and the sequence of life is completely cut, signifying sexual procreation and Kamare, an essential aspect of life or Kama. Kama is basically mainly shown here. The major focus of the temples, study of the Khajuraho temples have always been on sculptures. I mean, TV today, Archaeological Survey of India, historians, archaeologists of India, everybody have actually invested more time and effort on the sculptural traditions of the temple because the, the uniqueness of this temple is no part of the temple is left without carvings. The inner walls, the outer walls, the upper walls, the roof, the shikara, the vimana, the mandapa, every part of the temple is carved. Sculptures, sculptures come to the walls of the temple have some of the best sculptures of the time when they were being done. I mean, but in the 10th century, 11th century, best. Making Khajuraho representation of artistic features. Okay. It is believed that the temples constitute five different types of sculptures. Sculptures may, so many sculptures are there, we basically categorize them into five styles. One is cult images. Cult images are these sculptures which are uh, maybe carvings or sculptures of people or individuals or kings who were popular in that period. The second is some cult sculptures of devtas or you know the angels, Parivara, Parswan, Avarana devtas. The third one we see Apsarasas and Surasundharis, you know this um female ordinary ordained beauty the beauty aspect of female apsarasas or the angels female angels they are carved and then there are also secular sculptures in khajuraho with miscellaneous themes like dancers musicians disciples domestic scenes you name it they had it everything is there. and then mythical creatures vyala sardula um, things like, I don't know if you know what is a chimera. Chimera is like a single animal with a three, a goat with three heads. Those are also beautifully carved in Khajuraho temples. One of the first, earliest and oldest mentions of Khajuraho's group of temples are given by um, Abu Rayyan al-Baruni in the 11th century, 1022. And even Ibn Batuta, the Moroccan traveler, also talks about it. 
धर्मा अर्थ काम मोक्ष द फोर पुरुषार्धास आर क्लियरली रिफ्लेक्टेड इन द खजूर ऑफ स्कूल ऑफ टेम्पल we may we do believe uh, later archaeological schools do believe that uh, khajuro house style also highlights the proliferation the widespread nature of the shiva shakti cult in the 10th 11th century other theory is that the temples are a representation of devadasis who were once a major part of the temples khajuro house temples themselves we develop or we have divided into three groups the western group the eastern group and the southern group depending on the number of sculptures size of the temple and the material which has been used for these temples so kandariya mahadev temple is even today considered the best of khajuraho style the next uh, the khajuraho kingdom khajuraho school was largely developed by chandela the chandela emperors ruled central india from 10th to 14th century chandelas were well known for their interest in art architecture they were very ardent and strong followers of shaivism vaishnavism and also jainism they they, they they were active in madhya pradesh region from approximately 10th to 11th mid 11th 12th century okay now that's a very short brief of a couple of topics of uh, history current affairs which is important for your prelims guys do follow me on an academy and subscribe to an academy plus an academy.com slash at the rate shrivanar on all subscriptions now you do get also 20 percent off and um, while subscribing you can always use the subscription code shrivanar s-r-i-v-e-n-r and get access to india's best educators best courses with the most comprehensive material keep following this channel guys shortly i'll be coming with the next video thank you you have a nice day bye bye